Hey everyone, welcome back to Science. This is Mr. Bond here. I um, want to just remind you before we go ahead and get started that it may be helpful for you to grab a piece of paper and a pencil to jot down some of your thinking as we go throughout uh, this new lesson. We're going to be starting a brand new chapter for our evolutionary history. Um, and so we're going to start with a little review of what we learned in chapter two and go over what is our goal for this unit as scientists. And if you remember, we are acting as paleontologists um, while we are doing some investigation around evolutionary history, and in particular, this mystery fossil right here. So just to kind of review what we learned in chapter one, we started to talk a lot about similarities that we saw between the body structures of different species. And we said that species are going to inherit, which means those body structures are passed down from ancestor populations, meaning populations of um, a specific species that lived before uh, the current one. We also learned that body structures that are shared between two species shows that at some point those species shared a common ancestor. So if you remember, we did a little bit of work around these two things in our last unit. So I wanted to start by reviewing those, and now we're gonna get into really thinking about what we learned at the end of our last unit that didn't necessarily have to do with body structures, but actually had to do with um, the way that one of the species reproduces. And in our mystery fossil, this picture you can see is the full picture of um, the entire fossil, not just kind of the torso, but there was some new information that we got a couple lessons ago that the mystery fossil was pregnant when it died. Um, so what that really told us was if we're looking at whales, wolves, and crocodiles and trying to figure out which one of those is most closely related to this fossil, that we were able to, in our last lesson, really start to narrow down our claims. We had originally started by thinking, all right, this mystery fossil might be related to a whale, it might be related to a wolf. Um, but then what we did was we started to figure out that actually, because that new evidence we had that said that the mystery fossil was pregnant, meaning that it gave birth to a live um, animal, it couldn't be related or that it was probably less likely related to the crocodile because crocodiles don't give live birth. Um, in fact, crocodiles uh, are hatched from eggs. So we're going to move into a deeper question um, in this second chapter. We're going to start to really dive into how did all of these different species come about on Earth and look so different? If they're all related, how did they end up becoming so different? And we're really going to focus around those three species. We don't have time to look at every single species on the planet, but we're going to start to really dive into why are wolves, crocodiles, and whales so different from their common ancestors. So last second as a reminder, if you need to grab a uh, pencil and a piece of paper, we're gonna start our warm up now, which is gonna be something that you may want to uh, go ahead and write down as you go through. So this image is an image we've looked at before. And for your warm up, what I'm gonna, gonna want you to do is to look closely um, at the diagram right here. And it's showing you, it's got color coded some of those shared structures, the radius, the ulna, and the distal bones. So as you think about these three things, in the past we thought about some of the similarities between them. Now what I want you to do is I want you to carefully observe and look for differences. Differences between each of these individual structures. So even though they do have some shared structures, what we're gonna start to look at today is that these shared structures can be slightly different and have some different functions based on a few different factors, which we're gonna really dig into today. So go ahead and take a moment to pause the video. Again, if you haven't grabbed a pencil and a piece of paper, do that now. And you wanna go ahead and answer this question. So using careful observation of the cat and human limbs, what are at least two differences um, that you notice between these two front limbs. Go ahead and pause right now. Okay, 
Hopefully you got a chance to pause. If you didn't, go ahead and pause and go back and make sure you have answered this question. We're gonna move on to starting to think about some of the differences between three species in particular. And if you remember, I think it was four lessons ago, we started to practice sorting animals and we started to think about what were some of the differences between them um, and some of the ways that we could sort those different animals. So three that we're gonna zoom in on today is the dire wolf, fruit bat, and the titanolophus, which is this uh, creature that looks similar to a camel, I think. So what I would like you to do is we're going to be comparing these. And so one thing that's really helpful when you're comparing is um, creating a T chart for yourself. So all of this that is outlined in blue, you may want to write down on a piece of paper. It's going to help you. If you do need to pause the video now to take a second to copy this down, that would be great. You're going to have uh, two horizontal lines and three vertical lines so that you can have six total boxes. And we're going to talk about what's going to go here in a little bit. So go ahead and pause and get this jotted down. And when you're done, uh, make sure you have the three species, the wolf, the bat, and the titanolophus, because we're going to now start to look at the observations of each of these limbs, just like we did in our warm up for the cat and the human limb. But now we're gonna to start to look at these three different species. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slowly click through each of the next few slides, which are going to have the specific species and they're going to have a really, really large, it blew it up, so hopefully it will be easy to see some of those details and be specific in our observations. Um, each of the front limbs that you can compare and jot down some detailed observations on. So this is our wolf. Again, feel free to pause the video right now and fill in that first box for the wolf. This is your first box that you're filling in for the observations of the limbs. Then you're gonna make some observations on the fruit bat, and then you're gonna make some observations on the titanolophus. So I'm gonna click through those slides slowly, Feel free to pause, take your time, fill in your T-chart, and make sure you have made as many observations as you think are important. Remember, more observations are better, but also making sure that you are being as detailed as possible in the language you're using to describe what you see. Okay, so hopefully at this point, you had a chance to make some observations of uh, the different parts of those front limbs and uh, recorded some detailed things about the shapes you saw uh, or maybe the number of fingers you saw on each of those limbs. Uh, we're gonna move on now to go ahead and read a little bit about those individual species. If you didn't get time to fill in these three boxes up top, these three boxes that have check marks in it are the ones that at this point you should have filled in. So you can see mine just have a check mark. Yours should have writing in here with your observations. If you're not done with that part, go ahead and go back, rewind the video, and make sure you are making observations of those three different species. The next thing that we're going to look at is we're going to start to think about in this next row. Where does each of these uh, individual species live and how do they survive? Because we're going to start to think about, is there a reason that the limbs may be shaped in the way that they are? And thinking about where the animals live and what they need to do to survive are going to help us. So if you didn't get a chance, jot this in right here. We didn't have that filled in in our original um, uh, T-chart. And then we're going to be finishing up by filling in the three boxes down here. Same thing as before. I'm going to click through, 
some slides, but now you're going to notice that each of these slides actually has a little bit of information. So instead of making observational evidence, you're going to be reading through the information and looking for some um, important information that's going to tell you what? Well, if we go back to the last slide, remember we want to really be looking for where do they live and how do they survive. So let's go ahead, let's do the first one together so I can give you an idea of what you want to be looking for. Okay, so for the dire wolf, it says the dire wolf is an ancient species that went extinct approximately 10,000 years ago. It lived on land. So that might be a key thing that I would want to jot down, lived on land. That's something that's telling me about how it lived. Paleontologists use many kinds of evidence, including, including the size and shape of its bones, to determine that it was a predator that needed to run and attack large organisms for food. So there's a couple pretty unique things in there about the dire wolf. One is that it's a predator, meaning that it has to kill other animals. It also says that it attacks large organisms for food and that it does that by running. So if we're starting to look at the limbs, thinking about movement in the next few slides and how these animals move, as well as how they live, is going to be super important. So I'm going to go ahead and click through the next two slides, the fruit bat and the titanolophus, and you can pause the video to go ahead and read through each of those and make sure you are jotting down your notes in that last section on your T-chart. Okay, so hopefully at this point, you have gotten filled in all six of these uh, places where you could have taken some notes. If you didn't, I'm gonna really encourage you to go back in the video and make sure you've recorded your observations. So that's what you saw. And then what we read was uh, how those individual animals survive. So if you didn't get a chance to do that, go ahead and this video I'm gonna wrap up but go back and start to look at which ones did you maybe miss. You can scroll through, just pause on the one that you maybe didn't get a chance to fill in and finish that up. We'll continue here in a second with the second video for the second half of this lesson.